Welcome back everyone, we're here, another video. Wanted to make a quick video today, you've seen the title about building out a rig for the Canon EOS R6. A couple years ago, made a video on the Canon EOS R rig and uh, performed pretty well. I think a lot of the people enjoyed that video. So we made a couple upgrades, different camera obviously, and I wanna get into breaking down how I made the rig for this Canon EOS R6 and hopefully you guys can do the same thing. So we're actually going to take it apart and I'll show you every individual piece on what goes into making this full rig build out. But main thing is the Canon EOS R6. We've got our lens, a monitor, and then there's just a bunch of accessories that go along with it. So let me rip this apart and then we'll get into the actual pieces that make this rig what it is. All right, so we've got the camera stripped down. Like I said before, it is the Canon EOS R6. We'll throw a picture of everything we're using for this video on screen. But Canon EOS R6, I know it's been out for a while, but it's still the camera I'm shooting with. I love it, produces a really good image. And then the lens we're using is the Sigma 24 to 70 art lens. I remember when I was buying or looking at purchasing a lens, the EF lens was a little too expensive for me. So I went with this and I haven't had any issues with it at all. It's went through some wear and tear. It's got some scratches here and there, but you know, it gets the job done. So whatever lens you're using, that doesn't really matter for the rig. You can swap lenses for anything, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna be using the 24 to 70 Sigma art lens. So let's get right into the accessories we're actually gonna be using for this rig. The majority of this is built around small rig parts. So right here, we have a small rig cage. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's a cage for your camera. So pretty much what you do, put the camera in the cage. There's a screw plate on the bottom and then you screw it in. All right, cage is on. By the way, we're using this small rig multi-tool to attach all of this. This pretty much has every single tool you'll need to attach the cage and then any of the parts you buy. There are some Allen keys that are inside of it, like this one on the bottom here. I don't use them very often, but they are on the accessories we're gonna be using. So if you need to use them, you sure can. But the reason you want a cage when building out a camera rig is because the top of the camera, the side of the camera, the bottom, they all have these different mounting options to add accessories like a top handle and a side handle and all those things we're gonna get into. So having a cage really is necessary to be building out a perfect rig. Next accessory we're gonna throw on the rig is a side handle. I put it on the right side, you can put it on the left side, but generally the left side of the camera has cables coming out of it and it gets a little clunky if it's on the left. So I have it on the right. There is one more semi handle we use later down the road and we'll explain that when we get there. But I put the handle on the right side. It's got these two little screw in plates, screw them into the side of the rig and you're good to go. So let me throw that on there and then we'll hop into the next piece. So we've got two pieces of the rig built out. As you can see here, we have the handle on the side, have the cage all the way around the camera. And if you wanted to just go with this, you sure can. You can have a handle and hold it like this. Adds a little bit more weight, a little bit more stability, easier to hold than just the regular camera grip. But we are building the perfect camera rig and this is not the perfect camera rig. So next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add one more handle. This one's gonna be a top handle. The top handle is pretty important because we're gonna build a little bit more on top of that down the road as well. The next piece we're gonna use is a plate on the bottom of the cage. I use Manfrotto plates because they're interchangeable between my gimbal, my tripod, pretty much everything. I can't remember what the plate is called. I think it's a 502 plate, something like that. I use newer plates, not the Manfrotto ones. They're interchangeable, they're industry standard. So get whatever plates you need, but we're gonna throw that on the bottom of the cage. This specific rig uses two Manfrotto plates. There's gonna be another one on the bottom, but we'll get to that later. Let me throw on this plate and then we'll get into building out the bottom. Like I said about building out this camera rig, it is super nice that using this multi-tool pretty much has everything you need. Right now I'm using the flathead for the bottom of this plate but it does have Allen keys and screwdrivers and pretty much everything you'd need to mount something on the bottom of this plate. So if you don't have one of these, I'd highly recommend investing one. All of the tools we're using for this will be linked below. So just go ahead and click that on the kit page and you can kind of see the tools we're using to build this up. Okay, we got the plate on the bottom. Next thing we need is something to put this plate into. We need a mounting option for the bottom where all the handles and the follow focus and the batteries and everything connect to. And what that's gonna go through is actually what are called speed rails. These puppies right here, these are speed rails. I think these are 15 millimeter aluminum lightweight small rig plates. I'll put the exact thing obviously below, like I said, but you can get them in different lengths. You can get six inches, 12 inches, 15, 18, all sorts of sizes for these speed rails. But this is pretty much industry standard for mounting anything onto a camera rig. Now we don't have anywhere to put these rods. So the next thing we're actually gonna build out before we use these rods is a base plate. Here is our base plate. Now this base plate looks a little bit different because I've added 
a mount on top of it and taking it apart is a little clunky. Once you have it on here, you pretty much don't take it apart and it's four screws and then another two screws under it. And I didn't really feel like taking it apart, but the picture on screen right here, you can tell there is a newer Manfrotto mount on top. That's pretty much screwed into this small rig base plate, cheese plate. I'm not sure exactly what it's called. I don't know exactly what any of these parts are called, but I think some people call it a cheese plate because the top of it has a bunch of different holes in it, kind of like Swiss cheese. So you just have to add the newer mount to the top. The reason for doing this compared to my last rig is I wanted to be able to take the camera off of the bottom rails and all of the accessories and use the camera handheld if I needed to. Whereas the old mount, I would have to unscrew a bunch of different screws and take the whole thing apart. This makes it way easier to slim it down. I still have a little bit of a rig, a little handle, but it's not the full build out. So that's the reason why we transition to this. Once you have this built out, just throw that newer plate on top. You're gonna slide the rails inside of the holes on the side. So you can see here, there's just two little holes on the side, slide them in, and then there's some tightening clamps on the side. So go ahead and put both rails in you will be able to adjust these later. So the length or how deep they are into these holes doesn't really matter, but just get them in there for now and then we'll adjust as we go down the road. So we got the rails on there. Next piece of equipment is another Manfrotto plate. This one is a little bit longer because I wanted it to be able to slide inside of my tripod that I have and the tripod mount I have is a longer mount. So go ahead and throw this on there. Same thing as the last one, just go ahead and screw it into the bottom of the cheese plate this time. We've got the plate on the bottom. One thing I will mention, a little tip on putting these plates on. If you look at the bottom of the plate, it'll tell you which way the lens is supposed to be facing. So make sure you get that correct, put the lens in the correct direction. Otherwise sliding it onto a gimbal or a tripod or a hi-hat, whatever you're sliding it onto, it's gonna be a little bit difficult. You might have to slide it in backwards. So just make sure you're putting the plate on in the correct direction. So we have the bottom and we have the cage. These are our two main components for building out this rig. Next thing you're gonna do is slide this camera cage with the handle on it and the plate on the bottom onto the bottom that you just built. One thing to notice, I know I mentioned putting the lens forward, but I put the lens actually facing backwards on this one, so the plate is backwards, but that just makes it easy to slide the camera cage in from the front because the battery plate will be back here. So if I can slide it in from the front, I can easily remove the camera without taking off the big V-mount battery that will be on there later. Okay, camera is on our base that we built out. I moved the rails back a little bit so we have some room for our plate to put our battery on, but this is what it is looking like so far. Looking pretty beefy, it's a little bit heavier, you can tell. On the back here, what we're gonna do next is put the V-mount plate on there. So let me grab that quick. This is what our battery plate looks like. It is from Tilta, so this is not a small rig product. This is a Tilta product. I'm not sure if small rig sells these, but I just knew Tilta was good for batteries and that's kind of what I went with. There is an accessory you have to buy. So when you originally buy this Tilta battery plate, it does not allow you to swivel this rod, which is important for keeping the battery upright this way instead of the battery being flat. So this piece is pretty easy to add to the camera. It just slides on the back rails here. So go ahead and slide it through these holes. Maybe if I can get it, there it is. Tighten the knobs on the side, tighten this one, and then I'll tighten this one here in front. And then there is a knob on the bottom here if you wanna move your plate forward and backwards a little bit. I don't want it to be too close to my camera because sometimes I gotta reach in there and make adjustments. But just like that, you got your plate on the back. And the next thing, we gotta add a battery to the back. What we're using here is a Power Extra BP95 V-mount battery. These will probably run you 100, 120 bucks. I have four of them so I can go a full shoot day with two cameras and I usually do not run out. But 95 watts, so you can travel with them on a plane. Take that with a grain of salt because I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I think so. I've never traveled on a plane with them. But simple enough, if you ever use the V-mount battery, stick it on the plate, locks on pretty simply. So. Easy enough, you can get different size V-mount batteries, but these are the easiest ones for me to carry, and these are what works for my rig. Top handle. This is a piece that I thoroughly enjoy having because even when I'm not shooting with the camera, I can hold it like this and carry the camera around and not worry about dropping it. If you don't wanna carry it sideways, which I don't know why you would wanna carry it sideways, you can use this top handle. The other important reason for using a top handle is because there's gonna be a monitor on the top handle. So you don't have to look at the little screen on the back of your camera. We're gonna use a big five inch screen. The top handle we are using is again, small rig top handle. There's a bunch of different variations of top handles you can get, but I just got this one. 
seem to work and get whatever one you think works best. There's some that slide down the top of the rig and there's some that screw in. This one specifically screws in. So go ahead, get whatever top handle you want. Just make sure you get the top handle. Like I was saying, now the top handle's on. This is me holding it. You can walk around, you can shoot under slung, whatever you need to, but the top handle is probably one of my favorite pieces of the whole entire rig. Okay, the monitor and the monitor mount. The monitor mount is from small rig, just like a majority of the things. This is nothing crazy. It's just got a cold shoe on the top. You put that into the top handle like such. If I can get it in there. There is a little bit of a tilt feature on moving the monitor back and forth. The nice part about these small rig accessories is you can tighten them down and loosen them super easily. All you need is an Allen wrench, which actually comes in the top handle. So that's what I've been using for this. Just magnetizes to the back. Next thing we're gonna wanna do is put the monitor on. We are using an Atomos Ninja. Why I love using this so much is because right here in the back we have an SSD. This allows me to record a higher quality video to this card and dump into my computer rather than using just a regular SD card. It also reverts the Canon 30 minute time limit. So if you're looking to film longer things, I have a couple podcasts and I can just click record on the recorder and my camera can roll longer than 30 minutes, which usually Canon hinders you to only 30 minutes recording. So Ninja 5, go ahead and pick one of these up. It is a game changer. If you haven't used the monitor, they are awesome. They sell some bigger ones, some Shinobis and things like that, but I use the Atomos Ninja 5. Okay, the rig is starting to take a little bit of shape. You can see we got the monitor, we got the side handle, the battery. Need a couple more things in front and then we're pretty much good to go. Now you could obviously, like I said before, run and gun with this and it would be fantastic. Hold your hand underneath, hold it like this. But I got a couple more accessories we're gonna get into. Next accessory that really is not necessary, but for me really separates the videos between my competitors and gives them that little extra spice is a Black Promise 1 4th filter. If you don't know what a Black Promise filter is, I'm sure I can do a video on that later, but there are videos out there. It blooms your highlights and softens the harshness of the image just a little bit. So they sell them in 1 4th, 1 8th, 1 half. You can get different kinds of Black Promise filters, but I use this for pretty much every single video just so all of my work looks cohesive. The clients really love it. They don't know what it is, but this Promise filter has been a game changer ever since I've got it. Just screw that onto the front of the lens and it stays on there for all of my projects. This fun little dandy thing right here is the small rig matte box. I honestly don't even really need this, but it makes the rig look a little bit more professional. There are times when I am shooting outside and the top part works to block out the sun, but I don't have any four by five filters. I think that's the size of them. Those go in the front of this. So if you wanted to get a black pro mist in four by five, or if you wanted an ND on there or a polarizer, that's what this matte box is for, to put filters inside of there without screwing it onto your lens. They're really expensive, I don't have any. I haven't needed any yet. Eventually I'm sure I'll get there one day, but I like to put this on the front of the rake just to make it look a little bit more professional when you are working with clients. It makes your DSLR look a little bit more like a cinema camera. Pretty simple to put this on. You just push it on front of the lens. There's a little screw on the right side. Screw it until it's a little bit tight. One mistake I made is screwed it a little too tight one time and it was really hard to get off. So make sure it's just finger tight. You don't have to put it on there super crazy tight. And just like that, look how much better that makes the camera look. Just makes it look so much more professional, like you know what you're doing. And honestly, I kind of dig it. Only a few more pieces left. This does make your process a little bit more clunky if you're not using autofocus, but I use a Nucleus Nano Follow Focus. Super awesome, set in manual focus. You put a ring on your lens and you can follow focus with your subject all day long. Earlier when I was talking about having another handle, we have the handle here on the right side. The left side handle that I use is the follow focus. So just like that, I have two hands on my camera. I can hold it up. That's pretty much the handle on the left side. So comes in handy for actually using it as a follow focus, but also comes in handy for using it as a handle when I'm using autofocus. Next piece that goes onto the camera rig is this lens support from Small Rig. They sell a bunch of these. I don't really love them. I think all of them are clunky, but it goes on both rails here on front and keeps your lens supported from the bottom. You probably honestly don't even need this, but if you have a really heavy lens, it's kind of nice to have it on there. Tighten these two screws down. Go ahead and push this up so it is touching the rail and then you can tighten this knob a little bit. And now it's keeping the lens up a little bit. So if you have a really heavy lens, they're nice to have, but honestly, I haven't seen 
a super useful thing for them. I just know a lot of people use them, so I'm gonna use it too. The last main piece is actually the Nucleus Nano motor. So this goes on the other side, opposite of where the handle is. And that goes right next to the lens support. I have this pretty much jimmy rigged up to a couple different extra small rig pieces I was using, but you can attach it directly to the rail. I have about a two and a half, three inch rail here on the side, and then that's connected to another plate thing for a cheese mount that goes through the rails. And then the motor is here on the side. So that attaches to your ring that's on your lens and that actually allows your Nucleus Nano to follow focus. So you don't have to have that. This is a little bit of an accessory. If you like autofocus, feel free to use autofocus whenever you want. Or if you just wanna pull focus with your thumb like this, you can do that as well. Okay, we're getting down to the end here. All we need now is our cables. This right here is the power for the monitor. Comes with the monitor, I think. It might not actually. If it doesn't, I'll link it below. But this comes with the monitor. I attach it to the back and then hook it to the Tilta battery plate here on the side into the 14.8 volt holder. The next thing we have is the dummy battery. The reason we use the dummy battery is because we don't have to use the batteries provided by Canon. We can draw power from the V mount we have on the back. So this whole entire rig can run from one battery so you don't have to switch a bunch out. Goes in the same spot a regular Canon battery would go. Close the door. I like to wrap it around the handle one time so it keeps a little bit more clean. Plug that into the eight volt holder, eight volt port, whatever you want to call it, and you're good to go. Last cable we have is this super thin HDMI to micro HDMI or mini. I always get those two mixed up, but the Canon EOS R6, whatever mount that is to the monitor. Plug that into the in spot here. I like to wrap it around the handle twice, again, just to keep things clean. Go ahead and plug that into the side of the camera. And just like that, we have our rig built out. That's the entire rig. I don't know how many more accessories you could really add to this thing. We've got pretty much everything on there we need. So that's the entire EOS R6 rig build out. If you have any questions, I know this was super fast and I could have went in depth a little bit more and talked about each specific piece, but send me a message, leave a comment below. I'll try to answer those. This is the rig I use every single day to film for clients, to film for myself. Anything I'm filming, I'm using this rig. I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you're interested in more filmmaking videos, these two videos right here will be fantastic for you. Trying to be a little bit more consistent on YouTube to share a little bit more information with you guys. So let me know what you wanna see next or if you have any questions. We'll see you guys in the next video.